welcome to The Pointy End. I'm Keith Sutherland. Today my guest is Ian Hart, CEO of the Bendigo Trust. Welcome, Ian. Morning, Keith. Great to be with you. Um, now, it's almost six months that you've been in the job, and just I'll just run through some of the things that the Trust does look after, and I think there's a, a very special list of th- um, items here. Central Deborah Gold Mine, Tram Tour, Depot, Workshop, of course, Discovery Centre, Josh House, and minor involvement with the Gas Works and Victoria Hill. So there's a lot of products there that you've got to look after. But firstly, I just want to um, talk about Council commissioned a report from um, RMCG consultants, Nigel McGackian. What's really the upset of that report? And that's looking into the future of the trust and yeah. what implications has it for your job and for the future of the trust? Yeah, thanks, Keith. Um, the report probably was the catalyst for years of uh, the trust being in financial difficulty. So uh, it's been in crisis pretty much over oh, a number of years uh, periodically. And uh, in 2014, the trust went back to council saying we're underfunded, we don't have enough money to actually meet our obligations. That led to an agreement to have an independent study done of the trust and its opportunities going forward, which the um, RMCG uh, did on behalf of council. That report had a number of recommendations for the trust, which uh, then led to my appointment and we're working our way through all those recommendations to try and get some better outcomes. And it's probably opportune timing for a new CEO to come in, and it's probably difficult timing because you know it's underfunded. There's a lot of things on your plate, and we'll go through a whole list of them coming up. But at the end of the day, you can look at it with an open um, checkbook, I suppose, to look at some of the products. This works, that doesn't work as an insider, or an outsider, I should say, rather than insider that, you know, you protect things, oh, yeah, I like this, I don't like that. But you can come with an open mind and looking at it objectively as to what things and what needs the most attention. So it was probably critical timing that you came in, as I said, nearly six months ago, yeah. um, with an open mind and knowing things about the trust, but all of us know little things, but we don't know the background as you do. Well, I think that the McGuckin report provided the background to where the trust needed to go, and we're now working our way through what's the pathway to actually achieve a lot of the recommendations in that report. And they'll be good uh, outcomes for the city and for the trust. With that, now you you said that basically highlighted that it's been underfunded. Now, we've seen a 5% budget, um, well, the draft budget is 5% increase in rates this year. Then going forward, um, next year has to be CPI or thereabouts because the state government's going to put a levy on... um, how far you can go without sort of going to them and cap in hand and trying to increase rates. But they're cutting back on all sorts of things. We've seen the council try and get rid of hacks. We've seen them get out of um, items like the child um, care. Mm -hmm. Now you go there cap in hand and saying, this is your product. The council own these um, assets, but they've been underfunded. In my opinion, we're perhaps overfunded with the arts area. um, And I can say that. Mm -hmm. And... um, but where do, how do you sit with them understanding what assets, what tourism value you've got? Because it's all very well to say we've had all sorts of other terrific things at the art gallery, mm. but also the central Deborah of gold mine, the talking tram, yep. and all these things bring a lot of people to town. Difficult ask of council to give you extra money in this tough time. Yeah, look, it certainly was, but the report actually identified a lot of those issues. And to put it into context, the trust has had the same level of funding, never indexed for about 10 years. Um, But part of it has been, there's been, council actually own all the assets, the trust manages them on behalf of council. A lot of the capital works that have been done each year has really been because of, um, or been related to the assets themselves. It's been asset preservation and maintenance. So there hasn't been a budget available to reinvigorate the tourism products Um, that we're all interested in. So reinvigorating the talking tram, reinvigorating the experience at the Central Deborah Gold Mine and the other assets, there's never been a budget to do so. And uh, what we've been saying to council is now's the time to make an investment in these assets. We can um, get them to a point where we'll actually come over the other side of the mountain and ultimately rely on council less. But unless that investment is made now, um, then the f- prospects for the trust going forward and the products themselves are not very bright. The other one that's been a lot of discussion on is the Discovery Centre. And there's all sorts of talk, what's going to happen to it. 
and I believe that that's part and parcel that something has to happen there or something yeah. is going to happen there. So do you want to um, yeah. enlighten um, us on that one? Yeah, very happy to, Keith. So the Trust was asked more than 10 years ago, could they administer and manage the centre on behalf of what's known as the Bendigo Science and Technology Museum, Inc., who have a sublease from council over the building? Um, the building is actually owned by the owners of Marketplace and council have a 99 year lease on that building. Um, what's happened over the years is the trust has taken on more and more uh, accountability for the programs there and to the point uh, where the trust has actually been the underwriter, if you like, of science education. May be a good thing, very worthwhile programs that have been delivered there. Seems like it's outside your charter though. Right? But as a heritage tourism organisation, um, particularly a not for profit one, it is outside our charter. We don't have the financial resources to sustain it. And it was a recommendation in the McGucky in a report, and uh, it's been backed up in my report to say we need to withdraw. Uh, the deed that we have with the um, Discovery Committee of Management expires at the end of June 2015. So we've now advised we're withdrawing away from Discovery and we'll get back to managing our core tourism products of the mine experience and the talking tram. And that will likely lead to the Discovery Centre closing at the end of the July school holidays, in mid-July. And uh, discussions are ongoing with Council about the use of that building. Who knows what that will be going in the future, but Discovery as it is at the moment will close. There used to be a state government uh, operating grant that was withdrawn. As you're aware, there's a science works um, in Melbourne, which is very popular. Um, and it's become a lot more, it's a lot harder for this centre to survive on its own uh, feet without proper support. TAFE or the university wouldn't look at it for some of their students to take over a, an item like that because you know, it is science and I know been to the science works in Melbourne, magnificent, yep. but the maintenance and upkeep and cost to run something like that are enormous. So I can understand why the trust wouldn't yes. be wanting to continue. Yeah, look, they're certainly, La Trobe are certainly interested. Um, the issue is about what investment is required. There needs to be quite a lot of uh, refreshment of the exhibit floor. Um, and it's pitched at children that, that are in primary school, maybe too early secondary, um, whether that's the right fit for the university. And so they're contemplating um, whether they could be involved, but they'll be looking for partners, and that's a discussion they'll have with council post when the trust withdraws. Okay. Another one that's been a really major issue, and it's not resolved, and far from it, I dare say, the groundwater at the mine, mm. because it is contaminated. Um, what do you do with it? There are problems, and I understand that part of your operating budget has been paying 100000 plus a year. Yeah. Um, that can't continue because that eats into your profits, that eats into whatever. And at the end of the day, you need some major help from council and from government. And I guess this is a remnant, of course, from the gold mining days. Fantastic yeah. to have the central Deborah mine. But when there's groundwater problems, how do we resolve it? Well, ironically, the central Deborah gold mine is one of the lowest points in Bendigo. And there is an enormous amount of water that's flowing under Bendigo, um, which is as a result of mining activity over 100 years or more. So a lot of that water is now pooling at the lowest points, such as Central Deborah. It's coming up to the surface. If the trust did not uh, pump that water out, then the mine would flood and the whole tourism experience there would be lost. So we're doing it certainly to preserve the tourism at the mine, but if we weren't doing it, then the water problem would become a bigger problem, particularly for central Bendigo, because it would flow into the Bendigo Creek. We're talking about about one and a half megalitres of water every day. That's a significant amount of water. It's got metals, salts, um, arsenic, some other, uh, other uh, metals in there which aren't great for the environment. And it's, of course, got the hydrogen sulphide, which is the rotten egg smell, which would accompany it. So that water's being pumped out, it goes to the garden gully line, it then goes out to New Moon, the other side of Eagle Hawk, where Unity Mining pump it to the evaporating ponds at Woodvale. The Woodvale residents, quite rightly, have been saying, we've been living with this for such a long time, uh, there are environmental concerns, we'd like those ponds to be rehabilitated. And uh, this state government is now very proactive in trying to find both a transitional and a permanent solution to this issue. And we're hopeful that whatever those solutions are, ultimately pumping will either be funded at Central Deborah's part of the solution, or they'll find an alternative point to pump from and we'll be absolved from any responsibility. That'll take a huge burden off the trust. Um, 
we might have been painted as a villain. It's a mining issue. It's actually, it's, uh, it's not a uh, something that we've created. And ironically, it's only because where the mine's located that's at one of the lowest points that we're requiring to pump from there. Um, we find ourselves as being part of the solution rather than being the problem. And we hope that some uh, solution with the state government is not too far away. Won't be easy because, as you said, it's out to Woodvale now and everyone wants some action on it, but not in my backyard, as we see with the Telstra Tales. Anyway, that's another issue. Um, Now, back to the talking tram, because that's been something, and um, I know that there was a proposal probably 10 years ago where they're going to have new tram lines around the lake, and Mm. councillors got elected on that basis that they didn't want it. So is there any expansion plans for the talking tram? Because you go past there every day and you see some of the signage and Jimmy Possum on the signings and mm. lots of people. And when last week with the Country Women's Association, it was fantastic to see those trams and it's part of our heritage. Yep. But is there any expansion plans? And plus <clears throat> the old gas works, that's, you know, I go past when I would go for a walk around the lake and you see some derelict looking trams and things in there. I know it's not your responsibility, but that could be all part and parcel of some new venture, I'd, I would have thought. Yep, well, I'll deal with what those issues um, Sorry, one at a time. Yeah, sure. Um, look, it's one of the unique points of difference for Bendigo. And if we didn't have the trams, it takes away one of those unique elements about why people visit our city and find it. So uh, I think as the words that was used in the New York Times last year, Bendigo's got coolness. And uh, that part of the attraction is, of course, we've got these unique heritage attractions like the trams. And they play a really important part. Um, There has been a tram study report that's uh, recently been completed. That has ruled out a commuter um, service with the trams. It did look at extension of track, but as you can imagine, all of the uh, places they could go, the cost is huge. And with the uh, council's own, what they call their integrated transport land use strategy, um, moving some traffic away from Pall Mall would mean that there's probably limited um, appeal for extending the tram line as well. Um, But the good thing out of it is that the potential to have two new tram stops, one at the uh, cathedral as part of uh, that project, the Aspire project, and one uh, at near the Golden Dragon Museum, would add enormous appeal to the talking tram to us for the hop on, hop off service, that there would be more stops, uh, not as far for people to walk to all the attractions around Bendigo. We see that as being the glue for a lot of the uh, tourism attractions in Bendigo. So we'd love to see those things to be funded at some point in the not too distant future. That's something we'll talk to state and federal governments about. Um, and also fixing up a lot of the traffic management issues where the trams get caught, but they're also a frustration to motorists with the trams as well. Uh, we've had some near misses on right hand turn lanes. So we're trying to resolve those things, which again will be part of hopefully the solution for the future of the trams. We see the trams working with Bendigo Tourism to really add to the tourism um, appeal. And we'll be looking at theme trams, tying in with major events and trying to make the trams an important part of whatever's happening in Bendigo. Um, Second last thing I want to ask you about, is there anything else from the trust point of view that they've got on the drawing board that they'd like to implement? And of course, everything comes down to money. Mm -hmm. But is there any other projects that you see as a priority that you'd like to... There were several things we've discussed today, but any other new projects that you'd like to see, particularly in light of getting out of the Discovery Centre and um, doesn't free up time, but you need money? Sure. Well, it's innovation, Keith. So uh, getting eye beacons and apps for the use on the tram so that the tram tour can be more interactive. That's great. Um, Some innovation at the mine itself. So... We've got a good tour underground. We can make it a great tour with um, not a lot of money to be spent on some advancements around the explosive display, the gold display, our gold panning area, and some upgrades on the surface level of the mine so that people can come and have a great experience there. We also think it'll expand the opportunities for new revenue streams with potentially businesses taking Christmas parties. Um, We might do some special events there at the mine as well. We think they're all the things we need to do. And we'll be looking to the community to really support these heritage tourism products in a more meaningful way going forward. Well, finally, that's the question I wanted to ask you, basically with the tourism, because you are, it's, Bendigo Trust is tourism for Bendigo. There's the arts and culture is another one. There's there's wines, there's all sorts of other areas, but the talking tram, the um, Central Deborah Gold Mine, the Joss House, we've got the Chinese, of course, but 
that is known outside of Victoria, but does the community really embrace? I know that's only when visitors come to town that we take them to the central Deborah, Deborah gold mine. Is there more interaction we require from the community for some sort of events? I know we've got the blues tram that mm. gets people, the locals and others to sort of come along, but is there some other way we can engage with the community to get them really being advocates for talking about what you do with the um, Benigo Trust because you've got a myriad of things you look after yeah. and there's some terrific products. Outside of Bendigo, it's really well known, but we just don't embrace it as much as we probably should. Well, I think that's a good point. And we'll be asking the community to look at membership subscriptions, maybe sponsorships, um, embrace what we do as being great things for Bendigo. And I've got to say, Council and their tourism department, we're working very closely about how we can actually work together to get better outcomes not only for the visitors to Bendigo, but for Bendigo people as well. And they're, they're great things. So you would know also the Santa Tram, that's something which the community has got behind. We think that's got further growth in it. Um, we'll look to partner up with other events that are happening in Bendigo so that they can actually be part of what people are doing on a daily and weekly basis. Well, Ian, thank you so much for appearing on the Pointy End today. It's been great to be enlightened about what's happening at the Trust, obviously, lots of exciting things some sad things in one sense with the Discovery Centre, but that's evolution and we have to change with the times, otherwise we go broke in some of these things. So well done. Um, hopefully get you back in 12 months' time when some of these new things and new innovations are up and running. So I really appreciate it appearing on the program today. Thanks, Keith. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.